what to do when your employer doesn't recognize your value. Now, I've got a couple stories today about people that became billionaires because of that. I have another story, which is when you get fired, it could be your lucky day. So I'm going to talk about, first of all, a guy you, you don't know of unless you're my age. His name was Ross Perot. He actually ran for president, but that has nothing to do with this story. Ross Perot was the top salesman at IBM, International Business Machines, at the time when IBM's main uh, product was what they called mainframe computers. Great, big, very, very expensive computers. And the people who bought computers were not individuals who bought laptops like today. They were huge companies that had mailing lists and a lot of, or even governments that had uh, use for computing power, which is funny when I think back the computing power of these huge machines was about equal to what you get on a good little Apple Mac <laughs> laptop today. But in any event, Ross Perot, getting back to our story, was the top salesman at IBM. He had the skill to go in and talk to heads of companies and even important people at governments and without bribing them or being palsy wowsy or some, giving them prostitutes to entertain them, he was able to show these people that if you bought an IBM computer, even if it was the equivalent of $20 million in today's money, even if you spent that kind of money, you'd get in profit, increased profit, you'd get that back in a year or two. So obviously, that was a very good sales pitch. If you can spend $1 and get 50% a year on your money, wow, that's pretty good. So whatever his technique was, Ross Perot was the top number one salesman at IBM, and his customers were always, well, CEOs or government ministers in charge of uh, acquiring very important uh expensive assets. And as time went on, the president of IBM noticed, hey, who's this Ross Perot? He's, he's making more money than I am. And I guess the president had a little bit of an ego problem. How can I be the big cheese, the president of IBM, and one of my lowly salesmen is making more money on commission than I am. So he had a talk with his directors and what's the solution to this? Oh, well, all we do is cut Ross Perot's commission from 6% to 3%. And then he'll be earning less than you. Well, when Ro Ross Perot got this news, well, he uttered an expl expletive that I can't say on this YouTube because I don't want to be cut out. But he said, see, I'm very discreet. And he said, hey, I don't need you, IBM. I'll go and start my own business. And so he went to a much smaller computer company and uh, showed them how to build something that was more to his uh, specifications that he could sell for a high ticket item and to make a long story short Ross Perot or any top salesman can go off and go to a competitor and make their own deal I think he actually with the competitor made a deal that he owned half the company just because he could sell more machines IBM would have done better to give him 10% of the company and pay him in stock then uh, then basically fire him by cutting his commission so the moral of the story number one is 
if your employer doesn't really recognize your value and wants to e either fire you or cut your pay, you probably are valuable enough to a, a third company to, to go off and start your own business. Now, story number two is about one of my favorite guys who, who, who died a, a multi-billionaire a few years ago. And you may never have heard of a guy called Mark Rich. But Mark Rich worked for a Wall Street firm that is now forgotten, so I won't even mention their name. And he was their top uh, money producer. In those days, mergers and acquisitions was the game to be in. You'd find a small company uh, that had a lot of prospects and, and you'd have that company acquired by another company or sometimes a big company acquire another big company and you got a huge commission for doing that. But Mark Rich was kind of a jack of all trades. He, he did mergers and acquisitions. He, he uh, did buyouts. He did all kinds of stuff and he generated a huge amount of commissions or I should say earnings to his firm. And like the story I just told you, Ross Perot, he was earning more than the head of the company. And uh, when he went in and said, you know, I should be even earning more. Because in those days, if you were an employee, you probably got 20% of what you brought into the company. But he said, hey, if I'm bringing in most of the money, most of the earnings of this firm, I want half. And guess what they said? Out. So Mark Rich moved to a, a very low tax jurisdiction called Zug, Z-U-G, Switzerland. And there he said, I'm going to start my own company and I'm going to call it Mark Rich and Company. And because he was kind of a jack of all trades, he did something very interesting. In those days, and still today, many countries are putting in embargoes. So, for instance, today, we're talking 2024, uh, Russia can't sell its oil to Europe, or certainly to the United States. And what they do is they sell it to India, and India sells it to USA and other places. So that's called uh, uh, bunker busting. No, no, it's called, uh, hmm. what did I just say? Well, anyway, I'm an old geezer. I forget what I'm going to say. <laughs> but, but the point is that uh, avoiding, circumventing uh, this kind of regulation could be a very big business. So Mark Rich, you know, he, he recognized the obvious and he went to small time dictators in uh, Zimbabwe or Kyrgyzstan. And he went to these dictators and said, hey, look, if I can bring a billion dollars into your company, into your country, and you don't have to do much. I'll handle all the details. How about half a billion for me? Well, if you're a small time dictator and the country's profits goes directed to your po pockets and you can make a little a billion here and a billion there, you know, that ends up to real money. <laughs> so uh, Mark Rich made these deals that if, if Iran produced something like oil, it would go to Zimbabwe on paper, not in reality. But Mark Rich would then have a, a freighter that would fly the Zimbabwe flag. I'm making this up because the details are different. But he would have a boat take the forbidden embargoed oil and relabel it, basically, and send it to... Uh, customers who were the same old customers that 
bought it before, but there was a markup, you see. In other words, if the oil had been uh, $50 a barrel, by sending it to a, a third country and getting, getting it uh, relabeled, he would buy it for 35 and sell it for 60 or 70 and uh, the customer ended up paying more and the seller ended up getting less and guess who got the in between mark rich and the dictator in some country maybe liberia who didn't matter he made deals with all kinds of small time dictators uh to 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 uh allow him to relabel the uh, products he got from one country and then ship them to the same old people who used to buy them at a higher price. And so Mark Rich uh, quickly, quickly became a billionaire doing this and his old employer on Wall Street just uh, kind of faded away. Now here's one of the problems. The USA doesn't like uh, embargo busters, that was the word I was looking for before. And so they started a case against Mark Rich, basically accusing him of breaking US law. Now he's resident in Switzerland and he's become a European citizen, uh, Belgian, I think. And uh, there was a criminal sentence passed in the USA against Mark Rich. I think, you know, he got 10 years in federal prison for uh, bunker uh, embargo busting. And so he was essentially a fugitive and US Marshals were often sent to Switzerland to try to arrest him and bring him back to the States. Uh, they weren't allowed to assassinate him like in, if you're an enemy of Russia or China, you <laughs> you won't be alive. But the U.S. is a little bit more uh, nice, would you say? I don't know. They sent U.S. Marshals over to kidnap him. But when you're a billionaire, you can afford, which he actually had, nice Mossad bodyguards, a half a dozen of them. And they protected him very well until he ultimately passed away from natural causes. But the, the bottom line is... If you're really good at what you do, uh, you don't need an employer. You go off and do it on your own. And that takes us to the end of this video. And we'll see you tomorrow.